Good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jason Lee Taco, and we're going to paint this nice early autumn scene. Colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, Venetian red. Uh, this is burnt sienna, cadmium red, alizarin and crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue right there, cerulean blue, viridian, and chromium green. I'm sorry, no, um, permanent green. Um, going to start with a rough wash. I might use several elements from what I'm looking at here to try to make a somewhat interesting composition. I'm going to try not to do everything completely literal. As you can see, I'm on the edge of a road here. And we are dealing with creeping evening light. So I have to work a bit fast. If you like my videos, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button below. Hit the like button. Keep the YouTube algorithms happy, which are challenging to keep happy. Also, I teach live online painting classes. Uh, before I get into that, what I do here is I show the first uh, bit of the video to the YouTube public. The rest of the video, if you want to watch this in its full length without commercials, you'll have to become a Patreon subscriber, or Patreon member, I should say. Ten, uh, five bucks a month, not ten, but five dollars a month. You can watch my videos in their entirety without interruptions, and it helps support my channel because... YouTube ad, re ad revenue is pretty pathetic. Not to upset my host too much. So what I like about this scene is I just like the way the this angle here of this line with this fence. You have these more distant trees in the back. Let's get those guys in right now. They're kind of greenish. Kind of an earthy green. A lot of people driving by probably wonder what the heck I'm doing. So let's put those in right about there. Get a bit of yellow in there. Right now we're just blocking things in, trying to get some approximates in. Dealing with a bit of breeze, so hopefully it doesn't carry my stuff away. But I want to thank you for watching. And I do hope you find this helpful. Leave your questions, comments below. Sometimes I do get a bit quiet. Depending on what's going on. I'm painting on oil prime linen that I just taped down onto the uh, onto a piece of masonite panel. And at this point, I try to paint as quickly as possible to get everything blocked in because it is all about relationships, as it is in life. So it is in painting. And you got to get the relationships correct between your colors and values. If you don't get those down and those correct, then no amount of noodling with detail and things like that is going to matter. So let's get this a little more neutralized here. How's that look? Not bad, maybe a hair darker, a little warmer. So let's go over in the warm side of the palette, the warm, darker side, which is over here in these slightly earth 
tones. Let's neutralize that a bit with a bit of iridium. Maybe we'll, don't get too neutral there. These are um, these fields with these yellowing crops. They're a challenge to paint. I, that color and value can throw me off. Sometimes I have a tendency to go too intense with it. So I'm going to neutralize it a little bit and brighten it up later if I need to. Now, the big thing with painting, angles and consequent values, John F. Carlson talks about it in his Guide to Landscape Painting, which is kind of the Bible of uh, landscape painting. You want to get, make sure that your uprights generally are darker than your flat planes. Now, we are approaching autumn very rapidly. We're pretty much in autumn. And with autumn, that principle can get thrown out of whack when you have you know, bright yellow leaves and things like that in trees. Let's get this cast shadow in here on the ground plane. And just for kicks, I'm going to throw another cast shadow in right here. It's not there, but I want it there. All right, let's clean off the palette now. Actually, I'm gonna do something quick. Spray a little bit of mineral spirits. Create a little bit of texture. Now I'm going to clean off my palette because I want to do the sky. I saved the sky for last in most landscapes unless the sky is the focal point, which it's not. That way I can key the sky in, the value of the sky, into the rest of the seam. The sky is generally your lightest value plane. You want to make it your lightest value plane. Pardon me while I squeeze a bit more white onto my uh, palette here. I should have started out with that. Alright, I'm going to try to stick with my big brush, but I'm going to clean it off really good. It's a good idea to maybe have two brushes when you're doing this kind of stuff, but I don't have two brushes that are number six. I should have brought two out in the field, but I did not. Let's start out with some white and cobalt. Maybe a touch, or maybe not, of ultramarine. Let's start up at the top. I'm going to put a bit of viridian in as well. Darkest and bluest part of the sky is going to be more toward the top. As it comes down, we're going to get a little lighter in value, and it's going to change slightly in color temperature. Fairly ambiguous. Let's go in with a, uh, I'm going to try a touch of Venetian. Why not? Mix that in with that blue. Actually, I think we need to go a little greener. Let's go with some Viridian. Probably going to get a bit of traffic here. There's a uh, church right down the road. It's actually my church, and Mass is going to be starting soon, so... I'm not going tonight, obviously, but... Um, other people are, so they're probably going to be driving by. They might be even like, hey, I know that guy. That's that taco guy, however you say his last name. All 
Okay, so going with some Viridian and some white. Carefully bring that down. Almost seems to get like a hazy. I'm gonna mix a little bit of this Viridian in over on this Alizarin side as we get to the bottom. I'm not sure exactly what that color is. It just seems to get a little hazier down there. Viridian and Alizarin make kind of a nice violet. So let's try that. Okay, so I'm gonna compare the two, um, the scene with the painting. Things are pretty good. Might need to lighten up that ground plane a little bit. Um, but overall, I think we have some nice things going here. Take the spray bottle off here. Switch to a palette knife. Let's get in a little bit of sky holes in down here. I could have tried to paint these trees exactly how they are. This is note taking for me. This is gathering information that I can maybe use later in the studio to uh, build up a final painting. A lot of people, especially beginners, they start out, they want to create a plein air painting. Oops, there went some white on the ground. I should pick that up. They um, want to create a you know, masterful plein air painting, go home with something beautiful. And that doesn't happen very often. I mean, you see people do the plein air events. I used to do them. And you can, but, you know, it takes a lot of experience to do that. And it takes sometimes more time than what you think, at least if you're going to capture the scene with the colors and values accurately. Some people aren't as concerned about that. You know, and they might go out with a huge canvas and come home with something big, but... Thing is that it's so much more difficult to try to capture the values and colors as they are and to fill up that much real estate. So I like to go on the smaller side to get that done. I can go bigger in the studio if I need to. Stick with that a little bit. That palette knife, I mean. That's not bad. Punching up that ground plane a little bit. Some stronger greens. Even some cooler greens. I even see using that Viridian a little less yellow, a little more white, a little more Viridian in there. So get some of those cooler greens that can show up in a scene like this. I used to think always, you know, whenever it was sunlight, all the greens had to be really yellow, and that's definitely not true. Some greens back in here, a little darker. Yeah, a little darker than that. I gotta hold my paper, roll paper towels down. I have the white paper towels, but the sun just keeps really glaring off them on the palette. Okay, so we got a ways to go on this. I'm going to stop now and switch to Patreon members only. If you want to continue to watch me paint this, um, see if I can actually get it done or not before the sun goes down, uh, click on the link below, become a Patreon subscriber. I truly appreciate the support. And uh, you can watch this full-length video, no commercials, which is awesome. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you like this. Um, Subscribe. I'll be posting every couple weeks or so, and uh, we'll see you hopefully on the inside on Patreon.